we are surrendering our independence our own independent thought and just literally going on and just going on and believing what they say we're not challenging anything that that they say it almost goes to the fact that now people are young generations in the in the future will have more respect for for a you know for a, a social an influencer on tiktok than someone who's actually provided with historical context how are you doing this week matthew I'm happy now. Um, holidays are here. Schools, schools out for summer. Rolling yeah. on six weeks. Weather looks like it's found its kind of rhythm. Not necessarily to barbecue people for the sake of it being hot. You know, it's nice to have a kind of nice cooling temperature. So yes, I'm looking forward to six weeks of um, not having to wake up too early unless it's under my terms. Yeah. And then yeah, it was going well until you told me what you told me about h- half an hour ago about TikTok and when it came crumbling down. We're gonna we're gonna so, come to that, but I want to ask you, like, in terms of the weather this past week, like, how did you cope with the heat? What did you? What was your tactics? What did you do? Uh, you know what? Someone, is, I, mean, I would have never believed this until someone told me. But when you think about it, it does make all the sense. I think as people, we want to try and keep the air as flowing as much as possible. The trouble is, in that heat, there was no air. It was just heat and heat and heat. So. I recently purchased a new Dyson fan to try and negate that. But all it's doing is, and it's lovely and it's great, but all it's doing is blowing hot air constantly because all that's around. Mm. So, you know, keep that. This is the top tip, guys, for if it comes, if it, when it comes around again at some point, you know, lights off, blinds down, constant cold water, lots and lots of water. Trust me. Oh, I sound like such a grown up saying this, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Anything cold in your life, just, like just find yourself surrounded by it wear nice i hope i'm getting charged for this guys i'm not part of the government but still it's how the warnings go nice light and airy clothing sunglasses skin some whatever factor sun creamy wear wear it for crying out loud please please wear it i cannot stress that enough black people too Black it's, too. yes it's just as much us now we can't be ignorant right we cannot be ignorant ignorant about that anymore it has to be done um, there was another really good one that I had and it was just oh yes isn't it? And here's another one mm. if you can if you can if you can what I didn't realise is if you sleep lower down to the ground the heat doesn't affect you as much because after mm. all heat does rise True. so where I'm staying I'm staying at the very highest possible floor of his house mm. so it's no wonder I'm going to be hot no matter what you do we, we, we shut the windows we pull down the thing the light never comes on so I found myself walking into the cupboard because I'm like I would rather be blind at this current moment in time to have the lights off than desperately hot. Mm. So we also uh, and did that and just find so you know what you know what's killing us because a lot of people seem to like this this, this weather hot weather. Find mm. some water. This wouldn't be so bad if we had some kind of body of water nearby. So if you're going a river, a canal, a puddle, a stream, just sit by there for the I guess. <laughs> yeah, and if, if you're planning on jumping in the water, please make sure you can swim. Like, yes. you don't want to hear of any other, any more tragedies of people drowning. So, yeah. Please don't. And wash afterwards. Cold showers. Like, lots and lots. Oh, if you have an AC, if you have an AC, my goodness, my goodness. And it's an absolute treasure and a luxury for that, what the few times we're going to need it for the whole year. You know what? One thing I was doing this past week is I was combining, because I, I like my fruit juices. So I was combining apple and orange juice, right? Like, that fridge cool chilled apple and orange juice and add an ice lolly on top. Oh. So it just gives you that little bit of extra kind of I like it. it. It will help to be very refreshing. It was, it was almost like a it's like a budget slushy, but just not as slushy. It's, but you know, it was quite it, sounds, it was it sounds like right on my alley. And, and then the flavour changed as well as t- over time, mm. you know, as, as the ice lolly melted out. So that's a nice little tip for you. But mm. as Matthew said earlier, I dropped some news to him about TikTok and there's two interesting bits of news that has come out recently. One of them is from back in December and there's one from a couple of days ago as recording. So back in December, research was done looking into the most used and most popular websites on the web that happens every year, all the time. It's good to understand what brands, what companies are leading the charge, whether that be in design, interactions, so that other companies can learn from what they're doing well and adapt to their own platforms. And so it was found that the number one most visited website or where the highest amount of traffic, web traffic was in 2021, just to research back in December, was TikTok. TikTok. Now, 
in and of itself, it's not really surprising. You know, it's very easy to spend hours just scrolling through and time flies by when you, you know, for TikToks. For example, for, for myself, when I do make videos uh, at my church, uh, when we have like our video announcements, I sometimes put in like funny clips. I put funny clips every week in there. And sometimes I have to do troll through TikTok to find stuff that's kind of funny and appropriate and relevant. So I do understand that, yeah, time really can fly by and the clips are quite small a short in length, I should say. And so it's easy for you to just kind of be like, spend literally hours just scrolling through TikTok. So that's the first thing I saw, which when I told Matthew that he was understandably quite, you know, alarmed and confused and like TikTok's not been around for long. It's quite interesting. But then the second bit of news, which actually was announced by the uh, one of the senior vice presidents at Google, who's in charge of their machine learning, their kind of uh, the, the, the learning platforms and stuff. And he just said in a talk at Fortune Magazine this past week that in the millennial ages, he, people aged 18 to 24, so some millennials and a large proportion of Gen Z, the, the number one websites or apps that they use for searching is not Google anymore, it's TikTok and Instagram. TikTok and Instagram are their go-to sites to search for stuff. Now, to me, that is, on the one hand, I do kind of understand it because of course people's usage habits have changed a lot. Like how we use the web has changed when we first start, when the web came into play when we were in high school Absolutely. to now when for Gen Z, for example, that this is all they've known, they've grown up with it. So we understand that things have changed. But when you're telling me that they're going to TikTok and Instagram as their primary source of searching to discover stuff, that to me is very, very concerning. And of course, for you, Matthew, you came across like something along those lines in terms of like, you know, the, the, the big concern then is obviously with information, like how can we trust things? How do we even know that what someone consumes is accurate? But for you, obviously, what do you even think about that? And what was the implications that you potentially have seen already from this kind of shift in behavioral pattern? I mean, thinking about it and sit, sitting about not doing a typical knee-jerk reaction that I like to do, it does it does make some kind of sense because it's, it, like you said, it's free, it's short, it's quick. The clips are like, some of them are like five seconds. Some of them mm -hmm. go up to about three minutes. From an entertainment point of view, it's good. I think when you do research, you can use it as part of what you're going through. So even when I'm sometimes going and looking through topics or things for work, I'll look at something like that, but I'll also back it up with other data as well. It's not enough to just have that as your, you know, you know, as your meat, you know. Hell, back in my day when I was at university, the word Wikipedia was banned. If they, if you, if they found Wikipedia in your references, they'll send your work straight back. That is so true. So for us, it was Wikipedia. For now, it's, it's these guys right here. It's TikTok. And for some of that, it's only been around for only a short amount of time and for something that's actually banned in a few countries as well just shows you the scale for around the world i think it's banned in i think it's banned in india i think it's banned in china don't quote me on that i might well, be very very well, wrong well, Ch china china made it and the thing is the, the the version of tiktok that is accessible in china is very different to the version of tiktok we have in the western world mm. which i think in and of itself is very telling I'll hand back to you. Yeah. No, it, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's harmless within itself, but then in how it's used can cause greater, greater harm. And I'm going to get into what really got me this week that I saw in the multiple, multitude of platforms um, to what sparked me talking about this in the first place. Um, so what it was, so we're going to go back a bit. We're going to go back as far as World War II people. We're going to go mm. back in time. It was a different time, obviously, while we were at war. So... Obviously, yes, it was different times. So I saw this tweet and I told me and I told my missus and I thought we were in the car and I thought I was going to have a crash. He was so angry. But here it goes. Mm. For those of you who haven't already seen it, this was what it was. Um, I think the tweet's been deleted since, um, which is good. And it was basically how they're saying that Anne Frank had white privilege. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're okay. <laughs> For those who are listening, I, I, I have, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm completely lost for words. I just, I, I don't know where, where do you begin? Um, 
for those of you who read the books, especially those who read the books, pay attention to history and those who respect history all know that this is not true. Unfortunately, in our modern sense of thinking where we use social media for so many discussions and so many, you know, debating points, well, I say debating, it's a case of like a witch hunt sometimes, someone felt it within their wisdom and within their their, their, their power to kind of say something like this to try and spark a debate or some kind of hot take, mm. as we say it. And we're going to talk, I think we're going to talk a bit more about hot takes, but it just goes to show it's just... What in, do, you ha, do they have any kind of knowledge or like res responsibility knowing what kind of impact they were making when they just tweeted this? The worst thing it could be done is if it was if it was a joke. In fact, it'd be worse if it was a joke because it's just not flaming funny. Mm. Go talk to the people who are still being affected by it today. All the events that happened during the war, all the events of them being. I mean, I've got a big passion for history. I like I like to learn from it, so we don't, you know. I think, I think these sometimes in points of history, it's good to see these kind of things as a warning of what not to do, and to appreciate that in today's society we're not doing these things anymore. I like to believe that, but by saying to attach a modern argument to something that you can't even prove because you weren't even there, just seems mind-boggling to me and just so outrightly disrespectful dangerous and disgusting to all of those again who have who, are, who have actually been affected by the events that happened in world war ii and going to the camps i don't need to say the name of the place because we should already know it mm. i'm not going to say it it's just a case of just how dare you think you can get away with saying something like this and the worst thing is that you know there's going to be a handful of noisy individuals that are going to agree with this mm. because all they don't think of the they don't think of the context of what it would have been like back in those days we're not she, what do you mean kind of white privilege she didn't even make it alive out of the side of the war i think only one of her families made it and he died d d decades ago mm. she didn't make it so what privilege did she have the privilege to go and get humiliated and the, the prospect of death looming every day. Mm. Like, do you not, f do you not, f I mean, do you not think about these things? I mean, again, you don't have to particularly like history, but you just need to respect and understand it. Mm. Okay. And I'm going to go back to one more thing. This is something I saw on TV a few years ago, how some, they were trying to somehow campaign to, to try and get so to, in, as far as British history, which includes the war, for how it may not be a good thing for young children because it might affect their mental health, which is an insult to those who actually have mental health, a massive insult mm. for the fact that we should learn more about everyday life skills, which is fair enough. But why can't we live in a world where we have both? But this, why do we have to sub one for the other? Why can't we have more? We can have, we can, I'm not saying that we can have it all, but what I'm saying is that we can prepare and arm ourselves for the things in life that are, that are going to come up. You only have to look at in other conflict in the world for all the knowledge you might have about not balancing a checkbook, for all the knowledge you might have about knowing how to do a mortgage, which are important. It won't matter when they're invading your country. It won't matter. They'll come and take it no matter what, how you can show them your mortgage, D, they're just going to shred it right in front of you. It, it, it's there's two quotes yeah there's two words one of them said though if, if and there's one very common one one less known one and one of them's where it's like if you don't learn from history you're doomed to repeat it that's right you're damn doomed to repeat it and we already know it's happening right now and there's another one as well and this goes to other kind of balmy tweets just outrageous things and hot takes you've seen and that careless talk costs lives it might not be costing them lives right now but it did all those years ago mm -hmm. especially in likes of the war and, the, and, the, and everyone's my other way to talk about it's careless it's disrespectful it's there's just not it we can't it's there's nothing sacred mm -hmm. certain things you know they're sacred is why you learn from them that's why i think you know for all these historical elements or monuments that we have we need to keep them and so we can learn from them it's free it's like free publicity it's like free history you're learning from it just by looking at it to remind yourselves that we are in a better position to where we are now so why would you want to jeopardize that for the sake of you couldn't be bothered to learn history properly yeah i, th I think it's important especially in regards to history history to have a good balance 
an accurate retelling of things that have ha that have happened. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of stories, you know, as as is often said, the, the expression of like, you know, the, the history is told from the position of the victor, not the loser. So you need to always get, you know, good context behind conflicts, behind wars. But when you would, you know, that tweet about, and Frank, goodness gracious. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah. It's hard I, to repeat, isn't it? I, what I find really troubling is that, you know, when, you know, just going back to that idea of TikTok being the number one access website in December, the fact that it's the go-to search engine for, you know, Gen Z and, mo and a good number of millennials. I think the problem then is like, how do you verify information? How do you make sure that what you're seeing is accurate. I know going, looking back to the pandemic days, some of the information that was being spouted out by so-called doctors, and I'll use doctors in air quotes, anyone, you know, th there's a difference between a doctor of philosophy, someone who's done a PhD and a medical doctor. There's a difference. Both of them are, require a lot of time and studying, depending on the discipline you're getting a PhD in, it's, it's a long process and it's very difficult and very challenging. You have to then defend your, you have a thing called a vivo. You have to defend the, you, you know, the thesis that you've worked towards. You've got to defend it in front of like a panel of people. So, you know, and then as a medical doctor, you have to go through several different phases of exams to build up your knowledge, to prove your knowledge and have it tested. They're very different. Not all topics, a medical doctor, I would not ask them for advice about something relating to say, you know, business, for example, mm. unless they're a medical doctor that has business experience. The same way, I'm not going to go to a psychologist and ask them about blood related issues. Mm. That's not their specialism. So I think one of the big issues that happened at that point in time is that people were just, I'm doctor this. And thus, as I'm a doctor, everything I say is truthful. And, and that's where a lot of misinformation came in. And that's probably my big, biggest concern now, thinking forward with the fact that TikTok and Instagram are people's go-to websites to, to learn stuff. Like, how do you even know what you're saying is true? And if that's the case, then, because, the, because there's always truth. Hmm. Truth is truth. And you can have your objective experience. You can have your anecdotal experience. You can have your opinion, but none of those things fly in the face of truth. Now, that, that over time, we might need to challenge and we, when new evidence comes out and new data, we might need to kind of reevaluate, okay, this was, the, this was taken as truth originally, new data's come out, we might need to reevaluate it. A lot of that, you know, when you think of historical figures, when you learn more about the actions and deeds that they've been involved in, it does kind of make you call into question, this person who's used as a hero, for example, you know, when you learn more things that they've been involved in, it does kind of cause that scale to be balanced. Are they truly a hero anymore? Or are they someone that we can appreciate for actions they've done in one context, but also accept that in other contexts, they've actually not been a hero and they've been mm. more a villain to some people. Yeah. So I think that that's an important discussion and debate to have. But I do think there is a, and I think looking at it realistically, there's a major problem we might have going forward if people are taking TikTok as their, as their, you know, as their source of information. I mean, for you as a, as a history buff, like when you think about just that whole idea that people are, like they're not even doing any due diligence on what they're hearing. How can you see that playing out longer term? Because to me, it's it's a big concern. It's gonna be it. It got the. It has the potential to get worse if we're constantly looking to. Because that's what I think. What thing like Instagram and Twitter, not Twitter, Instagram, Instagram and Twitter do is that they cut out that middle man. They cut out a big chunk of thing where we're used to getting things very very quickly. So. In the context of how we were doing things, I say, not, we're not that old guys, no. but we're not, we are not that old. We're OGs though. <laughs> but in the unique period that we were in where the internet was a thing, but it still had quite a way to kind of replace certain things of research. So if we had to still go do things, even in university, there are plenty of good books that we had to go into and actually look for the thing where it was proven in truth and fact, you know, it's very hard to fake a book. Mm -hmm. So as much as the internet did have its worth going actually talking to people and, you know, people that know more about the subject than we do and reading the, and reading it, yeah, that's fine. Fortunately, you know, in the context of today, it takes time. And like I said, we're used to things being done very, very quickly. Why go out to the shops and do my shopping where I can do it on Uber Eats? I can, sub I can change an hour for a case of minutes. And it sounds ignorant, but that's because I've been doing it for the past few times, but the point still stands. It, 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 it goes back into what I'm saying. It's got the potential to get worse because of this, it's the speed of information and get it. And there's what's the, you know, and what's the point? Why do I need to check it? If that, that person's saying it, we, we, 
I think it goes back to what we do and how we treat people on those platforms. When they have a platform, anyone have a platform, we give them this kind of celebrity godlike status that they can do no wrong. So I don't need to go read a book on war and peace. I can go just go to someone on Instagram, on or on TikTok, who says this about war, war and peace in the case of a thousand pages condensed in about three minutes. You know, that's that's what essentially what it does. So we don't need to do that research. Someone else has already done it for us. You know, that's that's the kind of age we're living in it now where I don't, if you don't want to do a scary game, someone go out there and play it for you. If you don't want to go out and buy a particular car, someone's going to go ahead and review it for you. It It's just cutting out the filler that we think we we don't need. But in, in reality, we do. We are surrendering our independence, our own independent thought, and just literally going on and just going on and believing what they say. We're not challenging anything that, that they say. It almost goes to the fact that now people, young generations in the, in the in the future, we'll have more respect for for a you know for a, a social an influencer on TikTok than someone who's actually provided with historical context. I'll go for another example again, if I'm alright to go for okay. another another example. Going back to one who that made me laugh more than it made me angry because it was just so unbelievably bizarre. Was the whole thing of Martin Luther King? Now there was this uh, earlier this year. There was this claim that Martin Luther King had potentially, apparently, cheated on his wife, which I don't think he that he did. I think it was a lie built up by the CIA. But even then, his wife didn't make a thing of it. His family then make a thing of it. So why are, are you making a thing of it? Goes never mind the fact that you know. Let's not play down what his impact on people was today. He got assassinated. He died. Literally died on the sword for the things that he was going for in the Million Man March championship championing for proper equality you know a seat at the table not equality equality of opportunity and not equality of outcome that is what he he's he's going for as you know african americans african americans as black people around the world can join on and go on for that struggle and to be proud and to be happy that someone's doing it the right way the one someone who wants us a, a, a piece of the pie a seat at the table a, a voice to be heard for you to then turn around 60 70 years later than to say apparently he's not a good humor because apparently he was cheating on his wife when he wasn't mm. but you didn't do the research to try and prove that you saw one probably one very small title and thought oh maybe i should go and research on this i'm going to do my reading i'm going to do my due diligence um it was a bit like how the thing with white yardy Remember with White Yardy and someone how just accused him of being using Jamaican as being an act when someone oh, did the yeah. research to actually show that he's actually this is actually him. You you find something, you got to do, you have to give the respect to investigate it properly. Mm. You know, you have when it's almost, but with it's like we're rewarding bone idleness, we're rewarding laziness, we're rewarding you know just cutting corners. I like what you said about people needing to respect the process and doing research properly because that is ultimately the the you know when you think about this this new kind of social media driven attention seeking I need to be first rather than I need to be accurate. This yeah. is part of the issue is that people are happy to report stuff or say stuff or put things out there and no one's really happy to take the time to do their do their due diligence and make sure their information is accurate. I mean there was this obviously right now in the in the football world. Just as like a quick little aside, there is this. Um, there was a case, there is an ongoing investigation into a footballer who was arrested in North London at, on charges of. Uh, well, they're investigating alleged um, sexual assault and uh, of sexual inappropriate conduct. Mm. Now the club has not been named. The player has not been named. What's happened? because of this kind of race to be first and race to be quick is that a few journalists in the football Twitter sphere have released tweets, which it doesn't take a genius to work out that they're kind of implicating a particular individual as being the potential suspect. Now we don't know who the suspect is. Mm -hmm. We could infer, we could infer who it is based on the information that was given by one of the you know articles that was written in terms of like the, the, the fact that this, individual is in his late twenties, he's gonna to go to the World Cup this this winter. Um, you know, even the location that they were arrested in North London, it kind of narrowed down the pool of potential players who it could be. Which that but that's if you're taking into account the likelihood that the player has to live 
in North London and play for a North London based club. You don't have to, you could have been visiting a friend, you could have been actually sleeping over at someone's house. Mm -hmm. There's lots of other additional context, but this whole idea of I need to be first, or I need to be accurate. It's very dangering, dangerous for two reasons. One, if the person is proved innocent, because like right, no, legally everyone's innocent or proven guilty. So if they are proven innocent, then you've slandered someone's name for no reason. But secondly, if they are actually found to be guilty, you might actually perjure the, perjure the trial because say the jury actually liked the individual as a player, um, they may not give an accurate reflection in the ruling because, oh, but I like this guy. It's gonna, even, and even if the jury might have a bias because of who they support, who the player plays for, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So I think you're right. Doing research is important. And sometimes you might know something. It might not necessarily be the right time to say it. Mm. Like, give it time. Just be accurate. Yeah. Don't always be first. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the, the, the Martin Luther King thing. I think history is very important. And there's one, obviously right now we're in the midst of the, the war conflict between Russia, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Ukraine having to fight back. And it's been going on now for a few months and it's been quite a traumatic, traumatic, traumatic experience for everyone. Like the Ukrainians on the ground, people in, in around the world who, who are feeling with their suffering and, and really just want this whole conflict to be resolved, you know, as well, we would have hoped it had been done by now, but obviously mm. Mr. Putin doesn't really see that things that way. And he's going to keep going on until he gets what he wants or, you know, gets stopped. You know what I mean? Okay. But like, um, so there, there, and obviously within the Ukrainian army, they have very various different battalions and civilians and people that are helping to try and bring this to resolution. And there was a news article published this past week of a funeral of some soldiers who are from the Azov battalion. Now, what's really interesting about the Azov battalion is that a lot of the imagery that is associated with that group, whether it be crests that are on their uniform, whether it be little symbols that they have on their arm patches, even on the coffin of the individual that was being buried, it's symbolism that is known and associated with Nazi Germany from that time, that point in time. And there was a tweet coming out from someone this past week. I'm actually going to going to bring it up and read it out because I oh I couldn't believe it. So <laughs> someone highlighted to them that, you know, this imagery is Nazi, Nazi symbolism and, you know, this is wrong. And the person tweeted, the hill I'm dying on right now is they protected ordinary people from bloodthirsty war criminals and should be honoured for it. Now, listen, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't think anyone's honouring Nazis, not even their families honoured them, right? No one knows where Hitler's buried, thank God. So we can't have some weird annual pilgrimage to the, to, to the death site or whatever. There's right and there's wrong. And irrespective of how these um, soldiers are helping to liberate their country, the fact that they are proudly wearing this symbolism. In fact, even in the beginning of the war, when there was numerous pictures shown of Ukrainian soldiers, of part of this Azov battalion, that every time Associated Press had articles about it, they had the pictures of them, Nazi, Nazi insignia all over the place, and they had to keep removing the images. Like when it's one image, you can say, okay, it's one image. Two images, you know, it happens. Three. When it's continuously, article after article, you're seeing the same imagery coming up over and over again. There's a problem. And at some point in time, you have to take a step back and say, okay, what happens when this, this conflict's over? What happens with those individuals? Because I was even saying this to Matthew beforehand, like if, for example, you know, the next you know, the war's over and Ukraine liberate the country, they, they get the Russians out and, and like they start to rebuild and move forward. If a lot of people feel like President Zelensky wasn't, you know, strong enough in protecting them from this invasion, what's to stop someone from the Azov Battalion ri rising and saying, I want to run for the president of Ukraine because I will never allow these people to, this to happen to our country again. Nothing can stop that. And what's to stop people from voting for them? Nothing. Because on the balance of things, what this person's saying is true. However, you're literally putting a neo-Nazi into position of power. And so for me, I, I feel like... History repeating itself. His, it's important to understand your history. It's important to not just run with the trend of, oh, but they're good people. They're helping their country. I'm sorry, but like, the, the, symbol, the symbolism doesn't lie. Yeah. Right? There's an issue there and it needs to be looked into at some point in time. But I just want to go back to you, Matthew, just on this idea of, of history and this kind of looking at this whole TikTok-y, TikTok's ruling the world effectively, <laughs> right? Like, 
do you feel <laughs> like we're slowly getting to a point where because you know you know 1984 talked about group think you know we had brave new world from george uh from well or well 84, 84, uh, 1984 was, was george orwell. orwell animal farm was all well too um anyway brave new world I, I i've loved the book i've read it i've forgotten the author's name i'll just huxley uh, huxley brave new world right so we're slowly morphing towards a place where kind of like people's ability to think and discern stuff is slowly getting eroded away for groupthink. And that is a, a big concern. And that's, Dangerous. I guess, a topic for another day. But yeah, on that subject of history, like what would you say to kind of wrap things up? I say the thing about history, like I might have failed it in GCSE, but the, 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 the passion has still remained to this day. And I've always loved reading about like, like things about with war, with changeovers in society, big impact, seeing people kind of come together because for all the times we read about how society, societies break, what's not talked about another is how societies can rebuild afterwards, you know, after, mm. uh, you know, yes, you know, we could talk about us winning the war. It took us years to kind of bounce back, you know, after, in, and you know, to kind of bounce back to a place where we thought we, we'd be you know, happy again. You know, and we've, I like to think that we have learned that even though what we're going, what's going on right now in other parts of the world, we, we've never been safer, healthier, happier, more opportunity to, for people to do what they want to do in, you know, in a country that allows you to do these sort of things, you know, it, it, you have to be so kind of careful with things with history. We, and this goes back to some things that happened a couple of years ago, if you don't mind me touching on it, and okay. why it was something that I was for the sake of not simply just going along with a group, I sat back and I stayed quiet for a very, very long time. And there was the events of 2020 and what happened when the, the, the disgusting murder of George Floyd, the disgusting murder. Okay. Mm. This, and for a very long time, I was sitting back and taking my time to think on my own. I didn't tell anyone. And I was thinking in the context of like, right, there's some, there's a lot of things going on here that we need to kind of think about. Unfortunately, it seems like a group thing where not everyone's kind of taking that time to sit back and think. We can all agree it was a horrific murder, but there's other things here at play. And one by one, one by one, you see things starting to topple down. You see a lot of statues and monuments and things coming down. Fair enough. They might have represented, with a more nuanced view that we have today, they represents the worst of a society from centuries ago. And that's a key word there, centuries ago. It's not happening now. It will never happen now. We're not going to allow that to happen now. We know much more. We're very big on equality, inclusivity, rights, race, religion, gender, creed, where people come from. We're so much more conscious about these things nowadays. So we would never allow anything closer like that even happen again and this goes back to what i mean by having that history present to you where you look at these people no one ever said you have to look at these people in a case of honor or respect or happiness i certainly don't but what i see is a reminder uh. i see a constant figure a physical figure of what we do not want to go back to i then don't dis i, I then don't discredit it by taking it down without knowing the context of what went or the reason behind that statue. We do not think like that anymore. Okay. We need to be for the sake of history. And a lot of people now are learning of it, but it has to learn from both sides and we need to be individual enough and clever enough to kind of do that research on our own. It's never been easier to find. I, I would, I would say I wouldn't, say from both sides because at the end of the day mm. that from the nazi like using nazi nazism as, as an example yeah. there is no both sides they no. were wrong they were evil now i think in history it's important to understand context it's important to understand the events and have an accurate retelling of what happened like i said a lot of times in history stories are told by those who want so things will be omitted someone like is that. a hero in one person's context another person's context they're a terrorist for example that's just a general statement do not apply it to anything no. <laughs> don't try to apply it to anything <laughs> but you know it's important to understand like the context is everything that's the word context is key and i think it's you're right it's important for us to understand our history it's important things to be to, to be told accurately because things 
I think there are things happening in the world today which are leaning us towards repeating the ills of past. Even something as simple as the um, like the current government's kind of immigration plans and decisions they're making regarding mm. people's sort of what, what's classified as your status to remain or whether you get deported. Even those decisions, whilst they might look at it and say, actually, you know, we're doing this for the, you know, there's people that we need to remove because they're dangerous to society and whatever, it can create a precedent. And the issue of when you create precedents is that you might in the future have a government who do not do things, who do things indiscriminately and anyone can be removed based on that precedent. So it's important then, even with these laws that might be put in place or these things that might happen to challenge them in the right context. It's like, okay, you might say it's for this context, but the risk is you can, it could apply to a wider range of people, not just the ones that you actually want to get rid of. So yeah, you're right. I think context is important. And I think it's really important that people take the time to to learn stuff from the right sources and even challenge some of the sources they might have. Because, you know, you might have an independent author who they might have said, they might wrote, wrote a paper or a book or an article and there might be some nuggets of facts in that which can help add to the overall story of what we know. But again, it's important how you discern that information. Don't just take anything in as fact, but discern it properly and filter it. Yeah, that's right it. Yeah, it, and I've got some great examples of how I was saying how history, live living history from way back when is a great reminder of how your country can grow to be better. Mm. And the first one touching thing I'd say that a lot of ones we're talking about was say likes of Sir Winston Churchill, okay? So many people call him a hero and you're absolutely fine and worthy in your right to call that. But other people call for a more what's called more nuanced view because of some of the things he carried out, particularly to POCs back, um, you know, in the, in, for, the, for the war effort. It's not right. Mm. It's not right. And we're reminded to have that opinion it still doesn't take away from the effort that he had to kind of take a, take the world fighting for freedom to where we are today. I don't necessarily call him a hero myself, but I respect the, the, the push that he had to get the world, the country to where it is now. Between him and Hitler, I know I'd rather have, let's be honest. Also, if you don't believe me about, you know, having live history being in front of you to remind you of what not to do as a constant lesson, you only have to go to a few places like, say, Vietnam. You only have to go to places like Poland. You only have to go to places like G Berlin. Berlin, where, where, you know, even after the war ended, they were still, and they were part of East Germany, didn't, didn't get any freedoms to like, what, 1989, 1990. Mm. And even when I went uh, a few years ago in 2015, it still hadn't really truly recovered from it. And that's in 2015, almost like 70 years after that. A lot of the areas were still not built up berlin is one big giant exhibit for history for checkpoint charlie the the, the deaths of the holocaust the, the, the buildings in just so much disrespect gentrification just not is just not a thing a constant reminder and this is the capital the capital of germany still stuck in a state of the you know in contrast to other parts of west germany that's why i had, we had west germany for crying out loud people mm. flocking over for their freedom you know and they lost the war in more ways than we could know and another one um, is and I haven't I have never been and I do want to go for a case of historical context and just to understand and just to respect how we don't do these practices anymore and it might be a bit morbid mm. I would like I not what I would like but I'll be interested to go to Auschwitz they kind of they could have taken it down they could have taken it down and it's a huge plot it's massive they could have taken it down but they didn't and a sore point of their history, they didn't take it down mm. as a reminder, a constant reminder of where and how far they have come. That's what history is. It's how far you have come from where you were before. Because as people, we are evolving. And it's just knowing that these practices don't go on anymore. Mm. But you're not going to know that if you stick on this if you're on this social media thing all the time, you're only sometimes ever going to see from the negative point of view and anyone who's seen as somewhat superior in your mind is superior is always a bad person. No, go and do the reading. Go see the documentaries. Go to the places themselves. Go there and actually see what was going on. Get that word, that word again, that context of why it was important and see it as, you know, the, the, the reminder of what not to go 
back to you said earlier about the whole thing of immigration i remember when my you know my dad was talking my dad who's you know native from jamaica talking about how when when you was coming over you came on your mum's passport you're coming welcome in with open arms it was only a few years ago he had to try and find a document that didn't exist mm. at the threat of possibly losing his british citizenship and he's more british than he's in jamaican he's been here for like nearly 60 years mm. and like you said we're starting to see those old lessons not being learned and creeping in. So I hope that it doesn't get to that point. I it, it And if it does get to that point, what does it look like? Mm. Is it going to look like a war? Is it going to be a social upheaval? Are we going to be seeing more riots, more protests, purely from a lack of understanding and the people just didn't do their reading? So... If it is to go out there, yeah, I don't know what it's going to look like. And I think, you know, that's amazing. And I think what I'll say to end is this. If any of you have been watching TikTok and are following that pink juice, pink sauce trend, <laughs> I, I really feel sorry for you. Listen, TikTok is entertainment only. Do not take health and nutritional advice from a website made by a government. You don't even give the same website access to their own people. That is all. <laughs> and we will end it there. Thank you for listening to this episode of Conversations With. We would love to hear your thoughts on what we discussed today and may maybe you have a differing view to us. So please do let us know if you're watching on YouTube, drop it in the comments. And if you're listening on audio, if you are on Instagram, you can DM us at 87.uk. If you are on Twitter, you can reach us at, at 87uk and just let us know your thoughts. Thanks again for listening and see you again next time.